Aloha, Trey. I understand this is year 14, is that right? Yeah, yeah, 14th year doing this race. So that would have made the first one in 2000. 2001. 2001. So and if you count on your fingers, it ends up being 14. And you were but just age group for two years. Yeah, 20 years old. You won the 20 to 24 world title on your first try a week after Ironman? Yeah, I had no idea what I was doing. And was that the last time that you did the double? Yes. That was the only Ironman I've ever done. <laughs> Got it. So far. Let's go, let's go back even further than that. Do you remember how you first learned about Xterra? When your first Xterra race was and what you felt back then? First time I saw or heard about Xterra, I was watching Ned Overend win uh, the world title, 99, I guess, on TV. I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> um, and then my first Xterra was Keystone in 2000. I think I did the side stroke, which is not one of the four <laughs> strokes, by the way. <laughs> um, your swimming's come a long way since then. Um, what's it going to take for you on Sunday to get where you want to be? Um, I need to do my own race, and I my swim is you know, just a, a little bit better than it, than it was last year. Um, my bike is as good as it's ever been, and my run is a lot better than it has been for several years. Just another year of not having an injury and everything kind of coming together at the right time, I think. So I think if I put all three disciplines together well, if I'm you know, well rested going into the race, then I can uh, definitely be right at the front of the race. Is there any way to strategize for this race other than just going all out the whole time? You know, sometimes I think strategy can get in the way, um, and that's what I think happened in Utah. I was completely keying off of uh, Ruben and got right behind him on the bike, and you know, I had people you know say to me like, "I've never seen you, you know, following somebody on the bike. You know what we're doing." And I thought, well, I'll just try to stay close and beat him in the run, and I feel like I need to get out and do my own race. And if that means, you know, passing early or holding back early, um, just going out there and, and putting in that solid effort all the way through the bike. How do you train for this back home in Vail? It's a lot colder, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've done some really specific key workouts on the Compu Trainer for the last five weeks. Um, and I feel like that is the best type of heat training is just suffering indoors. Um, you lose a lot of water and also doing a lot of like a really specific, I've done a specific uh, heat training protocol um, just with a steam room, which is basically just seven days of sitting in the steam room right at the end of the day, at the end of your last workout and getting yourself really dehydrated. And uh, I feel like I'm really adapted to the heat, you know, as well as I can. Right. Um, what kind of bike are you going to ride on Sunday? I'll be riding the Felt Edict uh, full suspension 29 inch bike. The full suspension versus a hardtail on this course? Um, you know, uh, a month ago I was up in the air about what bike to use and I talked to Adam Worth who has done the, this course on both bikes, a hardtail and a full suspension, and he said definitely full suspension. And I know that I ride, generally ride better on a full suspension and a, a two pound weight penalty is not a big deal for me. Um, and I, I just, technique wise and uh, skill ability wise, a full suspension is a much better bike for me. And so I think this course is gonna suit a full suspension bike really well. You know, it's a different story in the women's field where every top female is on a hardtail 29er than, you know, they're all on an even playing field. So maybe you don't have a big decision to make. Right. Uh, do you have any specific pre-race rituals uh, for every race or to this race in Maui in particular? Well, I think a lot of people sabotage their race in the days before by doing too much. Um, you know, riding the whole course, you know, a day or two before the race or thinking they need to, you know, cut calories or eat some big salad the night before. I mean, you need to have fuel in the tank and you need to be rested. And it's pretty simple. Is that what you're telling all the athletes you coach to kind of do what you normally do? Yeah. I mean, don't try to do any some, you know, bizarre 
um, training thing. A lot of things people do out of insecurity, and so they feel like they need to go out and see every part of the course, and really you need to rest. It's going to be a brutally hard day, and you don't need to do the race two days before you do the race. Save it. You're, you're in a position a lot of athletes are in, not so much this year because it's year 14 in Maui, but with the rough water swim and the ocean conditions and currents and swells, is there anything you tell the athletes that you coach that swim in lakes and rivers to do or expect or? Yeah, you know, I, I like to get a feel of what experience those people have. Like there's a, a guy who's coming out his first time here. He's not a great swimmer, but he grew up you know, surf, surfing in the Atlantic Ocean. So he's pretty comfortable in the waves and he knows how to you know, get out past a shore break. And so he's gonna be fine. Um, but you know, one thing I tell him is not to get too caught up in the hype because a lot of, you know, we like to talk about the swell and how crazy it's gonna be. And it makes for really good TV. But you know, the thing is it's warm water. Um, you get, you're really comfortable in that water once you get out there. And if you get hammered by a wave or two, that's fine. And you just gotta, I mean, it's swimming, swimming. So, you, you know, it's gonna be fine. How big of a mental uh, part of the game is it for you, the swim? Because you're coming out of the water a couple minutes behind the leaders. I mean, how do you deal with that in your head? Knowing they're getting away, how do you stay calm knowing that your time will come when you get on the bike? Yeah, I mean, it used to be a big source of panic for me when I'd come out and hear that I was three or four minutes behind. Um, but now it's, it's, well, for one, it's a little bit different dynamic because with Ruben coming out really close to me, I'm not necessarily racing the first person that gets out of the water. I mean, there might be, you know, somebody in the top five that is in the top three out of the water, but uh, most likely the race is going on a little bit closer to where I am. And so I just need to keep chipping away. And if I hear that I'm three minutes behind, I'm not going to panic. Um, if I hear that I'm you know, a minute 30 behind, then I'm going to celebrate. <laughs> you uh, you raced, did a couple of races in uh, Europe this year, Czech and, uh, and Germany. What's the vibe difference? I mean, what's the, what's the difference between the American races that you've done so many of over the last decade and those, and, and racing in Europe? Um, I, I think it, it was actually a similar vibe, I thought. I mean, it's, you know, Xterra, it's a, you know, a little bit tighter, you know, family of racers than, you know, any of the road triathlons or some other endurance events. So I, you know, I felt like it was a, a similar feeling and similar vibe that I got there. And I, I do think that they, they like challenging courses over there. They don't love switchbacks. You know, there's a lot of steep climbing. And I, I like that. I, that's what I like about Xterra is a really hard challenge. Uh, importantly, do you know what you're wearing for a Halloween costume party? I know what I'm going to be, but I can't disclose yet. But I'm going to have to pick up a few things from the market. All right. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot. Uh, best of luck to you on Sunday. Thanks a lot, Trey.